What's up guys, welcome to Savage Actual. All right, so uh, today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. You know, uh, we really take a lot of the suggestions that you guys bring to us in the comments. We, we actually take it very seriously and that's where we try to interact with our fans a lot. We had a lot of people asking about the uh, Chapman Medal of Honor. Uh, and so we've decided to do that today. So it's gonna be a little bit of a, a slightly different episode. Uh, we're not, there's probably not going to be as much commenting from Jason and I because this is obviously a very serious subject and it was something that we take very seriously. You know, the Medal of Honor is, and, and what people do to earn that is, uh, is, is very serious. The U.S. government takes it very serious. And uh, what the uh, John Chapman did to earn that Medal of Honor, it was uh, pretty intense. So, but we're gonna take a look at at that uh, footage from that, and um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So, uh, are we ready for that? Yeah, I'll be ready after a beer. So that's true. We uh, on this, you know, some beer drinking. This shit. is this is something where you need to sit back with a uh, a drink and enjoy. And I think uh, Jason and I are we're out of our. Uh, we got some Golden Road Beach and Lattes here that are kind of worn out. I think from something else that we did, so we're gonna need some new new beers. Where's our beer guy? There we go. All right, our floating beer. I got myself a Golden Road Mango Cart. What do you got there? I've got a Estrella Jalisco Mango Michelada. It's super tasty. So, uh, which I fucking love. Let's uh, first. I want to cheers to Mr. Chapman yep. and uh, what he did for our nation. Absolutely, it's truly appreciated. And uh, let's take a look at this. So if you guys don't know, um, everything that happened with that, with uh, Chapman and all of his guys was actually built out from an operation that was already ongoing. Operation Anaconda, they were actually a, a blocking force to try to stop the Taliban from escaping out of, out of uh, Afghanistan at the time and hopefully to try to catch uh, bin Laden. And obviously that never happened at the time, but they were primarily a blocking force for tr other troops coming in. Early in the morning of March 4, 2002, a joint special operations reconnaissance team was tasked to insert onto the mountaintop of Takur Gar by way of an MH-47 Chinook, report enemy movements, and direct airstrikes. Among them was Technical Sergeant John Chapman, a U.S. Air Force combat controller. At approximately 2.50 in the morning, the MH-47 helicopter carrying Sergeant Chapman and the Joint Special Operations Team was ambushed as it attempted to land on the mountaintop. That's a fucking bad day. Yeah, so uh, Neil Roberts fell from that Chinook and uh, luckily the Chinook was able to get out of there and uh, those guys ended up turning around, basically getting into a new new helo and turning around and coming back. We watched the helicopter uh, move off of uh, my right shoulder over to the uh, from the west, moving south, um, infield, and as soon as it sat down on top of the mountaintop, um, we saw the RPG strike the aircraft, um, and then the aircraft uh, move towards the uh, valley. We heard uh, mayday, mayday, mayday. Any grim, any nail. This is Mako three zero. So Neil Roberts fell out. Yeah, initially, yeah. And that's what, he was part of that group and they went back, uh, Chapman and the rest of the guys, the other rest of the SEALs went back in to try to get him back. For an AC-130H uh, Spectre gunship. On board, I was a direct support operator, uh, which was uh, an extra sensor that was there for surveillance and support to ground forces and the aircraft itself. We established radio contact with them and set up an initial orbit over the downed helicopter. When we were doing that, uh, we learned from Mako 30 uh, Tech Sergeant John Chapman, their combat controller. Sergeant Chapman, uh, at that point, was telling us uh, that they had lost a teammate. I love that thing. It's a an AC-130 on site, it's amazing. Alone against the elements and separated from his team with enemy personnel closing in, 
Roberts was in desperate need of support. Despite having to make a controlled crash landing eight kilometers away, back at Gardez, the team elected to mount an immediate and daring rescue attempt to bring Roberts back. So super early in the morning, those guys are turning around and going back basically in darkness. Chapman, a U.S. Air Force combat controller, and the SEALs are attempting to rescue their lost teammate. You'll watch Chapman's heroic actions as he saves the lives of his entire SEAL team and then another 18 members of a quick reaction force, earning America's highest award, the Medal of Honor. Chapman and the SEALs exfil their MH-47 helicopter. John is the second individual to exit and immediately moves in the direction of the summit. He can be seen moving off to the right of the screen, alone. The team is taking heavy fire from every direction, as indicated by the arrows, as Chapman begins engaging targets. You can see spent cartridges ejecting from his M4. Chapman then begins closing with the enemy, forcing his way upslope in knee and thigh deep snow. He is constantly under fire as he does this. Chapman's team leader begins to close on Chapman, following his trail through the snow. His team leader's coming up behind him. You can see him. See the tail then? Yep. Black? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can see all the... So what you're looking at here, too, is FLIR footage of all this, and it's uh, black hot. So all the, everything that's beyond the, the uh, ambient heat is shown in uh, black. The dark mass above Chapman is a fortified bunker containing two enemy fighters, each armed with AK-47s who are firing down on the team in the darkness. This bunker will come to be known as bunker number one. To the left of the tree and bunker one is another gray mass. This is a rock outcropping that came to be called the boulder. Between Bunker 1 and this boulder can be seen the body of slain seal Neil Roberts, the man Chapman and the others are attempting to recover. Chapman, still alone and closest to the enemy, pauses to engage targets as his team leader follows him, but never actually catches up with him. Chapman, on his own, now makes the decision to charge directly into the enemy bunker, despite withering point-blank fire. Chapman, now literally on top of the enemy, engages the two combatants and kills them, saving the lives of the remaining SEALs. He does this from a distance of no more than 10 feet. These actions, by themselves, earned him his first Medal of Honor. He then climbs into and takes control of the bunker. Having cleared the immediate threat, Chapman is then joined by his team leader in Bunker 1. You can then see Chapman and his team leader engaging the next bunker, known as Bunker 2, which is situated to the left edge of the screen. This bunker, manned by a handful of Chechen and Uzbek fighters, also contains a heavy PKM machine gun, hand grenades, and rocket-propelled grenades. John Chapman is shot twice at this time in the torso and collapses, incapacitated. We saw tracer fire, uh, mortars, uh, explosions, RPGs. I, I mean, there was, a, there was a lot of activity. Next thing you know, uh, the, the team uh, pops smoke and they start to withdraw from the immediate area. And we're, we're following the, the team uh, from the initial uh, infill site and, and where their, their fighting positions were as they, uh, as they broke contact a couple hundred meters uh, down the mountain. You are now looking at a new angle and at the left of the screen can be seen the two-man fire team and team leader on top of the boulder. Just below it is Bunker 1 with the mortally wounded Chapman. One SEAL can be seen firing his modified M60 machine gun from the hip into Bunker 2 on the right side of the screen until he is struck by grenade shrapnel and tumbles 10 feet off the top of the boulder, collapsing at the feet of his team leader. 
thus setting off a chain of events that would lead to the SEALs abandoning Chapman on the summit. The wounded SEAL and the team leader can be seen conferring about his injuries. You can see all the other guys, like, one, two, three, I can see like four or five other guys up there on the right. Moments later, the SEALs decide to retreat from the summit because their position is untenable in the face of continued massive enemy firepower. Probably because they're doing some fucking standoff. Yeah. They can be seen moving toward the right side of the screen and passing the body of Neil Roberts. Unfortunately, the SEALs do not pass John Chapman, who is above them and inside Bunker 1. This angle shows three seals in a triangle. The larger black heat signature is a smoke grenade. Just to its left is a donkey and dead Al-Qaeda fighter killed by Chapman. The steepness of the mountain can be seen as the seals begin to slide down the near sheer face. The team leader, desperate for relief and now with two wounded teammates, asks for uncontrolled airstrikes from an orbiting Air Force AC-130 gunship. God damn. <laughs> the impacts you see are from 105mm howitzer rounds being fired onto the ridgetop in order to save the remaining SEALs. Because neither the SEALs nor gunship know Chapman is alive, he is experiencing these detonations from his position. Dude, he's laying there through that whole fucking thing. Yeah. God damn. At approximately 5.20 in the morning, Chapman recovers and begins to engage the enemy. Our, our sensor on board saw a, a completely separate uh, IR strobe uh, come active. So Mako 30, the main element, had had withdrawn a couple of hundred meters. But all of a sudden, at the at the original point, there was an IR strobe active again. When you go back and look at at the the culmination of all of the sensor footages uh, that we didn't have access to on board the aircraft or uh, in the immediate aftermath, uh, it became absolutely clear that it was Tech Sergeant John Chapman. Bunker 1 is on the right side center of the screen and Bunker 2 to the left near the screen center. It will never be known what caused his incapacitation and recovery. Of the two rounds that originally wounded him, at least one was mortal and at this time he is experiencing severe blood loss and shock. Despite that, he begins his one-man stand against two dozen enemy combatants. During this time, Chapman initiates a series of radio calls many of which are heard by a fellow combat controller and teammate of his and Delta Force operators on a nearby summit. Despite this combat controller's replies, Chapman never acknowledges whether because of damage to his equipment or himself will never be known. This new angle and footage shows Chapman at the top, identified by the green dot under the tree at Bunker 1. The lower center of the screen shows the first enemy fighter who is about to charge Chapman in the hopes of killing the American. The timestamp at the bottom shows it is now 6.05 in the morning and fully light. He's been fighting alone now for 40 plus minutes and has received more gunshot and shrapnel wounds as a result of the fierce combat. This scene shows the second of several enemy charges. In this stunning display of determination and courage, Chapman can be seen fighting hand to hand with the fighter. In the larger screen display can be seen additional enemy moving on to the summit. But right now, John Chapman is fighting for his life. Six minutes later, in this new shot, Chapman can hear another helicopter approaching the summit. He is in the bottom center of the screen underneath the tree and can be seen in the magnified inset box as he begins his desperate final stand to save the lives of the 18 men on the helicopter. The red dots are enemy fighters. John begins engaging the enemy in multiple directions and is rapidly approaching the last of his ammunition. The helicopter contains a quick reaction force comprised of rangers, pararescue men, and another combat controller. It is now 6.13 and the helicopter is short final. 
The enemy is desperately trying to displace Chapman so they can put heavy weapons or rocket propelled grenades in Bunker 1 while simultaneously engaging the helicopter. With the choice to save his life or the lives of his unknown comrades, Chapman makes the decision to climb out of the bunker and begin firing in multiple directions as can be seen in the inset. Suffering from as many as a dozen wounds, Chapman is in fact already in the process of dying. As he fights, the helicopter is struck by a rocket-propelled grenade and makes a remarkable controlled crash just below Chapman and the summit. Chapman, now off-screen, continues to cover his comrades as they pour out of the stricken helicopter. Some of them are fatally shot as they exit. These images, with Chapman fighting the enemy at close quarter, are the last to show him alive and in this heroic act, thus qualifying for his second Medal of Honor. Ultimately, Chapman would expend all but the last few rounds of his ammunition, until, finally, after 16 bullet and shrapnel wounds, Chapman succumbs when he is shot through the heart. We will never know his final thoughts or words, but what we do know is, his decisions and actions single-handedly saved the lives of 23 comrades. He sacrificed himself for the, for the QRF that came in. I think if John Chapman had not have been alive at that, that day, at that moment, the outcome of the insertion of the helicopter I was in with the QRF may have been drastically different. Um, by him being there and laying some press of fire in that position as we were flaring, flaring to land, absolutely uh, reduced the amount of rounds the enemy was able to put into the side of the helicopter. Uh, he volunteered to go back after he had landed, back at Gardez. Uh, he didn't have to go, um, and he did it because he loved what he did, um, he loved his country, and that I'll never forget. Hard motherfucker, man. Yeah. So that was uh, that was uh, pretty intense. <laughs> yeah, to say the least. All right, guys. I I don't know. I don't know what else to say about that. I mean, um, uh, I mean, that's fucking warrior through and through. Yeah. He made selfless service. And he's not thinking of himself a whole lot. There. I'm sure he's a little bit, but. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's he's danger close to those guys. You know, for sure. Feet away, you, you don't have a choice then. You know, I mean, long before the helicopter ever came in, that guy was wounded, and he's in a bunker, and he can hear a helo coming in. He could have probably laid up in there and, and uh, been down. assisted, yeah. and, and, yeah. and but he made that decision to step out of that bunker and uh, he closed protect with that the entire time. Yep. As soon as he got off the fucking bear, he closed with. He didn't ever step like one step back. Yeah. The entire time. Yep. Even in his last fucking moments, he was still yep. pushing forward. He, yeah, exactly. Fucking the word go, that guy leaned into it and, and uh, never, never, uh, never uh, slowed down. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty impressive. I'm not so, going to armchair quarterback this and say what shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, and that's like, I wasn't fucking there. All I can say is that was intense. And uh, yeah, I wish the dude was still here, but he went out. You know, as a warrior, wants to go out if he's got to go out, fucking blaze of glory. So, on behalf of Savage Actual, and myself and Patrick, uh, you know, major hats off and I appreciate the ultimate sacrifice that uh, John Chapman gave for our country, what he believes in, and the idea of America.
All right, hey guys, thanks a lot for watching Savage Actual. Uh, again, we specifically did that episode because you guys have suggested to us over and over, and uh, so we we uh, you know try to try to watch and, and, and uh, put out there what you guys suggest. Uh, our Savage Army is is uh, uh, you know right there alongside us all the way, and we really appreciate everything that you guys have done, and appreciate you guys supporting us. Uh, comment below, make sure you subscribe if you haven't been to our channel before, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.